Thank you for joining us today for our webinar. We're really excited to have you with us. My name is Amy Klaus, and I'm the Marketing Manager for the Ages and Stages Questionnaires, or ASQ, here at Brooks Publishing. Today's webinar is about the ASQ3 and the Maryland Developmental Screening Initiative. You'll be hearing from Kimberly Allen, the sales consultant for Maryland, who many of you have probably met at conferences or spoken with on the phone. And we're happy to have Dawn Baker, the program director at the Woodbrook Early Education Center in Towson, Maryland, with us today to talk about her experience using ASQ3 in her center. Before we get started, I want to go over some quick housekeeping tasks. So you'll be muted for the webinar today, but if you have any questions during the presentation, please go ahead and type them into the question box. We'll take these questions at the end of the presentation during a Q&A period. For the presentation, you might want to minimize the GoToWebinar bar on your monitor so that you can see more of the presentation on your screen, and you can do that by clicking the orange button with the arrow that's in the top corner of the control bar. And then if you want to ask a question, you can just click that orange button again so the panel will pop back out. And if you're listening through your computer speakers and have any audio issues, um, you can always dial into the webinar using your telephone. The phone number is in your confirmation email and also in the GoToWebinar panel under audio. So we're also we're recording the webinar, and you'll receive a link to the recording and a follow-up email tomorrow. Please feel free to share that with other um, colleagues you may have. We'll also post a link on our ASQ website. So now I'd like to go ahead and introduce Kimberly Allen. Kimberly has been a sales consultant specializing in ASQ for eight years. She has a master's degree in education, and she spent 12 years as a reading specialist and literacy coach in grades pre-K through 12. And Kim, I'm going to turn it over to her. She's going to tell us about the Maryland Initiative. Thank you, Amy. And welcome, Dawn, and welcome, Marilyn. So nice to have you on. We covered uh, across the state with some of our attendees today, so it's kind of exciting to see. And it really is an exciting time as we're moving into this developmental screening initiative. A lot of people um, had sort of breaks over the summer and stepped aside, and they're now back into the throes of school and back to school and selecting, of, selecting their developmental screening tool. The on-track developmental screening initiative in Maryland um, called the On-Track All Aboard for Developmental Progress kicked off on June 1st of this year, and it is going to require by July 2016 that all licensed child care centers and family home providers to implement, use, and demonstrate their use of a developmental screening tool. There's more information about this on the website, on the Maryland State Department of Ed website, um, and there are five tools from which they can choose and all of the descriptions and prices are included on there. The tool samples, a lot of people have been giving me calls and did not realize that you actually can view and put your hands on the samples of the five tools at the local child care resource and referral offices. If you were not aware of that or um, you have friends who are not aware, please spread the word. I seem to hear a lot of this on the phone that people did not realize that they could go to their um, referral offices and actually do a little bit more of an in-depth e exploration of the tools. Um, there is online training that must be taken through the website in order to select your tool. So everybody in the state is entitled to either a digitally delivered or a physical print copy of the developmental screening tool that they choose. But they can't just contact the companies behind it. They can't just contact the State Department. They actually have to go to the link that we've linked through our website and we'll take you right to the State Department of Ed website. And there is a little training um, module that you need to take. You need to have your license number and then you can enter in to the portal and select your tool. You'll have it shipped to you if you choose, when you choose the ASQ, it'll ship to you within five business days. We have to have these orders in by December 31st of 2015 or you will not receive the free copy of the developmental screening tool that you choose. That's really important and I'm not sure how many people are aware of that deadline date. If you miss that December 31st date, you cannot receive a free tool January 1, 2016 on. So um, again, it would help a lot if you spread the word to your colleagues. I'm hearing more and more that people were unaware that there's an expiration date, and they're really unaware of whether this regulation is actually going to come into fruition in July 2016, and it is. 
Developmental screening it just cannot be refuted. We know the importance, we see the statistics, and we know as teachers and nurturers of children that watching with an educated eye really helps us detect the delays early. Knowing what we know about brain development, the earlier we get in and intervention takes place, the more apt we are to assist in any type of delay that may be manifesting itself. We miss the window, that birth to six, birth to seven window of brain development. We know that it is a much more difficult chore to remediate and to intervene with a child and, and um, develop that, get them up to the typical development. It does improve the child outcomes overall. Another important piece is it really does school the parents in child development 101. And so parents will be able to have the same conversations with teachers and with pediatricians about what to expect with a child at, say, 18 months. What is it that they're looking for in development? And this is a really important piece because we want to empower the teachers, empower the parents, have everybody talking the language of pediatrics, and be able to really focus on what is typical for the child at that snapshot at that moment. The other great benefit is there is parent involvement now, and it builds that relationship. So that empowerment piece is the piece I hear over and over again um, through parents and teachers that are on the phone with me, that they uh, love the fact that they've got some really nice, strength-based, educated conversations with families. I guess Q3 is, a, is probably the most, I think it is the most widely used developmental screening tool, and we're talking across the globe. We have entire countries looking at putting this in as their developmental screening tool. It's really exciting. It's exciting in its accuracy, its research, and it's exciting in, it is, uh, in its easy-to-use format. Um, and again, being respected by pediatrics as well as with um, the uh, early care settings. Basically, it's 21 questionnaires spanning for one month to 66 months. It first came out in 1995 and was designed as a tool to assist parents who were taking babies out of the NICU and going home. And of course, having a premature baby, oftentimes there are a lot of questions about what is typical and what is not, what should I be looking for? So it was originally published to help uh, parents with their surveillance of the growth of their child. The reliability, validity, sensitivity, and specificity all can be seen on our website if you're interested in the statistics, but it is the most uh, valid instrument out there for detection of developmental delays. ASQ3 is used in child care, preschool, Head Start, and early Head Starts as well. Pediatric offices, as I had mentioned, and we're seeing more and more of the pediatric offices implementing it in their waiting rooms. We know that they need to move children through quickly um, within their office flow. And we also know the feeling of sitting in that waiting room for a long period of time sometimes. Mm -hmm. And many of the offices have implemented the ASQ online on iPads or on a Galaxy Pad, any type of tool that receives the internet so that the parents can fill out a questionnaire while they're waiting. Home visiting programs um, are using the tool widely. Again, a fantastic piece for conversations with families, early intervention programs, public health programs, and so on. It is, as I had said, the most reliable and valid instrument out there. It's fast and easy to score, the 0, 5, 10 scoring system, and it's even better if you're online because it scores it instantly. It educates the families. It is Child Development 101. It is very parent-friendly, low readability, around a fourth to fifth grade reading level, so that it accesses the um, any type of roadblocks that there might be with literacy. It helps start those, start those strength-based conversations with parents. It was designed to be a parent information piece, parents filling it out. And it is easy, really easy, to talk about the child's development at that moment in time. The questionnaires are in Black Line Master, a starter kit, are the fancy words for the little box with the handle that these Black Line Masters come in. There is a CD-ROM attached to the box, so you can download more of these Black Line Masters if you'd like. Each questionnaire is five pages long, and there is a user guide that's packed beside it, and the Quick Start Guide is included as well. We'll have a um, description of that in just a moment. 
for helping in the scoring and administration and selection of the correct questionnaire. So screening, basically three simple steps that we give the questionnaire to the parent to complete. If you're using ASQ online, we have a way to put the URL to the questionnaire on the website or to actually email the link so that the parents can actually fill it out at home, print it out, or just do it online paperless. Parents can easily try those activities that are on the questionnaire with their child. Three simple responses, yes, sometimes, not yet. There's 30 skill items and there's 10 overall items. As I said, it's a 0, 5, and 10 score. We'll look at, at that more closely in just a moment, but you can score it in just two to three minutes. You take the transcribe the scores across the information summary page, and then you can determine how your particular organization will uh, follow up with the child if there are any causes for concern. Some child care programs have teachers complete the questionnaires as well. This is not required. Remember, this tool was originally designed as a parent-completed questionnaire. There are moments when you may have the discussion with the parent that perhaps the child is not talking at all at school but talks a blue streak at home. There might be some contradictory information. And by having both teacher and parent fill out the questionnaire, you can sometimes get to the solution for how we can get the same behavior consistent across settings. But truly, it is not a piece to be compared parent against uh, teacher. It really is a screener, which is simple. It's a snapshot. It's just a quick look at the child at that moment. When we complete the questionnaire, a lot of times we see it done as sort of a, a parent-teacher conference, um, which helps expedite it, helps speed it along, because I think sometimes Parents might question whether they actually did see it or maybe not, and maybe just labor a little too much about the answer. And there really is no need for precise accuracy on answering. If a question is just incredibly too difficult, you can skip up to two overall and still get a reliable and valid question. But the nice piece is it creates a conversation between teachers and parents that is very focused and again very strengths based and very much putting everybody on the same playing field. It should only take about 10 to 15 minutes to fill out the questionnaire and be sure that that correct age interval is being used. You can either do the math which will be on the quick start guide or Amy will explain a few of the other features we have digitally to help you select the right questionnaire um, with the system. Professionals score those questionnaires, as I said, the yes, no, not yet, oh, the 0, 5, and 10 point scoring system, all the yeses, and we're looking at each domain separately. Um, the yeses are 10, the, some, um, the sometimes are 5, the not yets are 0. We're looking at communication, gross motor, fine motor, problem solving, and personal social, and with each one of those domains, there are six questions to be scored, and that's consistent across all the questionnaires that we're, we're looking at. So communication basically is the babbling, the vocalizing, listening and understanding. Gross motor is arm, body and leg movements. Fine motor, hand and finger movements. Problem solving, which addresses learning and playing with toys, and the personal social that focuses on solitary social play and play with toys and other children. We review the scores and compare them to the standardized cutoffs on the information summary sheet. If a parent completes it on their own, you don't need to photocopy the summary sheet and send it with them, or you can just tell them to leave it blank and you'll be going over it together. Review the concerns on the overall questions. The overall questions are anecdotal notes. These are important pieces not to skip. These are questions that point to perhaps a family history of maybe deafness or ear infections. They're questions that really uh, look deeper to the overall story of the child. And they're um, as important as the yes, no, and sometimes questions. We interpret the results, determine follow-up actions if needed. The scores in the white area indicate that the child is developing typically. Resist using pass-fail, resist using um, any of that type of vocabulary that might bring in alarm. What we want to talk about is typical. If the score ends up in the gray area, the monitoring zone, we talk about additional screening may be needed, and perhaps the learning activities could be used to facilitate development. 
Scores in the black area may mean that the child is at risk for developmental delays and should be referred for further assist assessment. But again, not a case for alarm or panic. We want to keep the conversations positive and strengths-based. The questionnaire summary form is shown there just as a bird's eye view, and you can use it a variety of ways. I like the piece down at the bottom that talks about the follow-up actions and what it is that you decided to do. And that corner little tiny microscopic box there on our screenshot is just transcribing the scores from each one of those domains over. Just another visual, another way to look at the summary sheet. If you are using ASQ online, this will populate all on its own instantaneously as soon as the last question is plugged in. So that's a great um, feature of ASQ online. It prevents a whole lot of the uh, handwriting that might have to occur with the paper and print. Great. Well, thanks, Kim, for that description of ASQ3 and that overview. Um, we are happy that Don Baker can join us today. Don's the program director at the Woodbrook Early Education Center, which, as I mentioned, is located in Towson, Maryland. The center has programs for children two to four years of age, as well as a summer program for kids three to nine years of age. Um, last fall, we were lucky enough to film a video at Don's Center about how their staff uses ASQ3. Um, the Woodbrook Early Education Center is one of the programs that has both teachers and parents fill it out, and then they talk about the results during a parent conference. And this video um, kind of highlights how they do it, so I wanted to start off our presentation about Woodbrook by sharing the video. exactly what they are and they're not afraid to tell you. As a parent and as a teacher and as a director, I think the early intervention is critical. I was the parent of a young lady who had a learning disability and early intervention was huge and life-changing for her. We can help children to walk into elementary school feeling confident. We need to offer them those tools to do that and I think ages and stages is one of them. It's easier for teachers to implement in the classroom. Many of the other tests were very, very time consuming for teachers to use. This one was rather quick and gave a wonderful snapshot of children and their development. Ages and Stages works because it's a whole team involvement. You're, you're integrating both parents, the student, the teachers, everyone that gets involved and is working for the greater good of the child. It opened a door for parents to be able to communicate with teachers on the same level. They were both looking at the same document. The teachers and the parents do the same activities at home and at school, and then they come together and meet and talk about the results. I felt very successful with it, using it as a teacher and being able to talk parent to parent with um, other parents about their child. They sent home the Ages and Stages questionnaire for the parent to fill out with uh, an information sheet on the front, kind of explaining that we would complete it at home and then the teachers would complete it at school and we would discuss them at the conference. I love having parents involved because they really enjoy doing the activities with their child and I like that he didn't feel on the spot, like it wasn't a pressure thing. It's been fun doing it. I think Ages and Stages is right for you because it is engaging and it's activity based and it gives you a scoring sheet that shows where kids are that's easy to communicate with parents. It's so amazing to make a difference in children and families lives so when we can get early in intervention into a child's life we can make that life changing impact. All right, so now we're going to have sort of a Q&A with um, Dawn about how the We Center uses ASQ. So, hi Dawn. Hi, good afternoon. It's a pleasure being here. <laughs> yeah, we're happy to have you join us. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit about when and how the We Center started using ASQ3? Well, several years ago, we, we knew that this was going to become a regulation, or at least it had been being discussed to become a regulation and so we wanted to become familiar with it prior to that process um, but we had also been looking for a way to share with parents developmental information um, you know certain th those developmental milestones that our children go through and it would coincide with what they're seeing in the pediatrician's office what they're reading in their parenting magazines and their parent information things 
Ages and Stages was a tool that uses milestones to help parents understand that. And for us, it opened a door for conversation. It, it was broken down into ages by month. Um, and as a teacher, you'll have a variety of those ages in your classroom. So you're not going to be filling out the exact same form for every child. And um, that, in the classroom, gave you a really good overview of the classroom children that you were teaching as a group, not just as an individual. Great. Let me forward. So um, can you tell us a little bit how, about how you use ASQ, what time of year you have the parents and teachers fill it out? At this point in time, we've been using it for our first parent conference. Uh, the way that we choose to use it is to make it a team effort. In our classrooms, we have our, um, our teams of teachers that are working with the children. So they have input as a team in filling out the questionnaire. And then the, we send it home to the parents to fill out um, with a letter you know, explaining what's going on. And I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, and then I score both of them. And uh, I look through them. And if we have children who score right at the cutoff line, um, or below the cutoff line, or excel on the on the form. Um, we I go back to the teachers and we have a conversation about uh, is it just a weakness? Is it something that we want to require some some interaction with uh, infants and toddlers, or some of the other options that we have available, or is it weak enough um, that there needs to be more done? And in the same thinking, it, have they scored really well on the test, and could we maybe fill out the next one and see sort of just as a teacher and see sort of am I challenging this child enough? Can I what can I do to help um, him to feel safe and to feel confident and ready to go to the next thing? Um, we also talk about how to share that information with parents. Uh, and if I need to be in on the meeting or if, you know, sort of that how are they going to present that information to, to parents during their conference. Great. Um, so I think this is a little bit about this slide. A little, you could talk a little bit more about the parent-teacher conference um, and how you how you share results and any tips you have for sharing results. Well, the first tip I have is for directors, and that is that I would encourage you to think about building a little more time in for conferences than usual um, because this really affords us an opportunity to discuss things because. When par at our school, when parents and teachers come together, parents have not seen the teacher's form and teachers have not seen the parent form. And so it's sort of a first time meeting of reviewing those together and giving parents an opportunity to share what they see at home and teachers an opportunity to encourage parents um, to understand that there's a different dynamic in the classroom than what we see at home. And so it really opens the door for a great conversation um, because we know as teachers and directors that that dynamic is very different. A classroom of 12 or 15 children brings uh, a different setting for children in terms of their confidence than it does at home with this mom and dad. So I think as directors, I would be sure um, that you give enough time for that to happen. We make sure that parents at the end of the conference receive a copy of both forms and also a, a copy of kept in the child's file because that's going to get passed along to the next teachers for them. And, um, you know, sometimes it's difficult to share information with parents, especially if you have a big concern. We use the term pink flags when children are in that um, monitoring zone. They're just the things we want to keep our eyes on. Uh, yeah. And But if it's really in a lower place, um, sometimes parents have a hard time hearing that. I know as a parent I did. Um, but when it's shared with lots of love and genuine concern for that child, helping parents to understand what early intervention does, um, and that it's, we're not trying to label anybody, we're not trying to, we just want to give them what they need individually so that they can be successful. Um, we want to make their school life happy and healthy, and we want to make home life happy and healthy and give parents lots and lots of support. Um, Sometimes parents don't see what, what we see because of that dynamic, and sometimes they're not ready to see it. Um, sometimes we're, you know, especially in our lower ages, two, three, sometimes we're just the very beginning of the journey. 
and when they're ready, um, they will hear and be ready to move on something. But you know, and as teachers and directors, we need to remember that. Um, but helping them to see that the earlier the intervention is started, the the better for the family, the better for the child. So how do you introduce the questionnaires at your center? Uh, I send a, a letter, in fact, that's a little blurb of it there, um, home that explains why we're doing it, uh, exactly how this process is going to happen, that the teachers are going to fill out the exact same form that they're filling out, some suggestions on how to fill it out. The biggest suggestion would be that they need to become really familiar with the form. Um, in the classroom, our teachers, my teachers, have uh, created a, um, their own little checkoff list from this form. So they kind of do it in the first three months, uh, work it into their planning as the closer we get to um, the conferences. But for parents, just a letter that explains what's happening, um, a letter that also has the vocabulary that they're going to be seeing, if you see uh, the developmental milestones, um, communication, each of those sections I try to explain sort of in a snapshot for them what that is. And I also explained a little bit about how to, to do it, how to actually implement the test at home. Um, and we wanted to help parents to understand where this form came from. And it's really important for, te for teachers to understand that they may need to really explain the difference between the classroom and home. Uh, I try to do that in my letter, but again, teachers need to be ready to do that in the classroom in a really positive kind of way. And I'll mention that, so Dawn created these materials that you see on your screen now, but there are sample materials that are in the ASQ3 user's guide that you can model um, for your center and you can revise them as needed. Well, and I think that as a director, it's, it's good if you put a little bit of yourself in that letter so that they can see that this is really important to your center as well. Great, that makes sense. So can you tell us a little bit about the benefits you see of using a screening tool like ASQ? Well, the biggest benefit uh, that we saw actually more so maybe the second time that we did it, because the first time we implemented it, everybody felt overwhelmed because it was new. So, and that would be any tool that we see. But as we moved on, what we saw was that this really provides a great snapshot of children and their levels. Um, in fact, if you have a concern, um, if even after you've had conferences, it's a great tool to pull out. Um, children may have aged a couple of months, and so they may have moved up in one of the, um, the sheets. I can't think of another word to use, but uh, one of the tools, one of the monthly tool um, ages. And you can see if, you know, sort of where they are. If you have a concern, you might go backwards and fill the one below it out. Um, so it's a good tool to use not just for that initial screening. It really does promote conversation between teachers and parents because, as I said before, many parents are not aware of what happens in the classroom completely. They know we're there all day, but they, they sort of, um, they know that we're busy, but as we give them examples, um, because this is a little bit example-based where you have children draw and write and um, pick things up, and teachers share with them the story while they were implementing the tool with the, the, the parents, um, and then the parent shares their story of what happened when they were doing it together, it really promotes a conversation. And that's why I would really encourage you to make sure you have enough time for this to happen. Um, another thing that it does is it encourages parents to sit down and do an activity with their children. Uh, I think there's a resource book that goes with this that has lots of activities. So you could add activities into your newsletter. Um, that are sort of geared towards this just generally for the different age groups so parents have things to do with their children. Um, so it's a great snapshot. It's quick as a teacher. You know, we're busy all the time. Uh, we got lots of paperwork. Uh, and it's hard when you have one more piece of paper you need to fill out. But this really is um, easy to, to do, quick to do, and concise. And that's what we need. Thanks, Don. Um, do you have any, I know you talked a lot, gave a lot of recommendations um, that the last couple slides, but did you have anything else you would like to add now? 
Well, um, I, I would, as always, encourage you to become really familiar with the questionnaires. Remember, they're all basically the same, but they sort of change a little bit. So the more familiar you become with them, uh, based on the age that you're teaching, the easier and more comfortable you'll feel with filling it out. You do have to gather materials to complete the questionnaire, uh, things like blocks and crayons. Um, my staff created their own boxes per classroom and per age group. That were the things that they had available that could help them to implement this questionnaire. And so after the first go around, it was significantly easier because they pulled that box out, they were ready to go with it. And generally, each age group uh, is asked to do similar kinds of things, just one level up. And um, they also put some of their ages and stages items on their daily record keeping forms. It saved them some time. They put it in their anecdotal records. They, you know, they sort of, after the first time they used it, they continued to integrate it into their planning and into their own documentation. So um, it, it has helped a lot with that. We also have the social and emotional screening tool. And so sometimes if we have friends who are you know, we have a little concern about we the teacher fills that out, um, and if they feel that it's time for parents to fill it out, then they ask. But that's not one we do right away. Um, but it's an excellent tool to have available. We've seen that tool used by other organizations who've come in with us to work with us. So um, we know that it's a good, quick snapshot. And um, in our busy day, that's important. Great, thanks, Don. Um, and we'll. Um, take questions from Dawn at the end. Sorry, I'm just going back to our big slide so I can see everyone's questions here. Um, and I think we were echoing a little bit during part of that, so I apologize. I think we um, have it fixed now. Okay, so Kimberly is going to tell us about the options um, that Maryland programs have now. It is important, as I had mentioned before, that everyone knows that they have until December 31st of this year, 2015, to order their developmental screening tool, to order the ASQ, in order to receive it free. Developmental screening will be part of child care regulations in 2016, in July, and you will have to pay for the tool yourself if you don't order before December 31st. That's probably a priority piece. Um, we can order it through the ages and stages, I think we've got the website coming up where you can take your path right onto the State Department website to order. And you'll be able to choose the print or the online, English or Spanish, as your free option for this year to get started. The, print, the starter kit I mentioned before has the user guide within it, the 21 questionnaires on paper, Black Line Master, and also on CD-ROM and a quick start guide. And again, make sure you choose either English or Spanish, one or the other, to make sure that your uh, language is appropriate for your children and your parents. ASQ Online, you would not, um, if you went ahead and selected this, you will receive an email saying, uh, let us know when you'd like to start your subscription. They'll give you some basics in the email. It's the online yeah. management system. You can access it 24-7. You can add as many users to it as you'd like. You can print questionnaires off for yourself or for parents. You wouldn't give parents access to this because this will have all your confidential data for your entire student uh, group in it. There's automatic scoring and reporting functionality, and there's lots of different letters that can be customized, and you can even put your uh, logo of your organization right on the letters as well if you'd like. So you can um, make it a completely digitally run developmental screening program. And again, it is it can be accessed on any device that is connected to the internet, even a smartphone. So know that it can be used uh, wherever there are internet, internet connections. Um, ASQ Online, just like the print box, you choose either English or Spanish. You get a one-year subscription with unlimited screens as part of the Maryland initiative. And then in another year, when it's time for you to renew, it will cost you $125 a year with unlimited screens. If you did the regular subscription, this is quite a bit lower than our regular cost. There are sample videos at our agesandstages.com website to show you the functionality of ASQ online if you'd like to look deeper. 
The learning activities are a powerful tool that is in Blackline Master. It's on CD-ROM, and it also has a key code within the box, within the book, that you can add to your ASQ online subscription if you'd like to email out the learning activities to families. But there's more than 400 activities to share with parents in here. Again, written at that lower readability, written in layman's terms, so that it is accessible by anybody that would like to utilize a teacher or parent. We have a lot of waiting rooms handing these out too as um, sheets to go. And they are broken down by the five domains that the ASQ3 uh, screening tool looks at, as well as the ages of the child. And it begins with one month. They're in English and in Spanish. We've got a scoring and referral DVD available. It's an optional piece. When you take your training to select your ASQ on the MSDE website, they have got this uploaded for you to view, which you have to look at before you actually select the tool. If you need to do professional development and you want to train perhaps new people that come to your center, this is a fantastic piece to have on hand um, to either develop, to distribute for the new employees or for overall awareness with parents. There's a materials kit, which is Fantastic too. Another optional piece comes in a tote bag. All of the things that you'll have in a daycare center, your books, your bears, your beads, your bottles, and it will have an instruction booklet. Everything you need for ASQ3 screenings. Again, we see this used quite often in um, home visiting programs. Have the tote bag over the shoulder, never assuming that the house has got all the manipulatives within that you're going to visit. And many uh, pediatric waiting rooms have purchased these as well to complete the questionnaires while the parents were in the waiting room. ASQ Family Access, additional, another one of our options, not part of the State Department of Ed provided for free um, selections. The Family Access you would add on top of your ASQ Pro. It allows you to put a URL onto your website for your center or for you to just send out by email links to the, the uh, ASQ online and when the parents put in the age of the child, whether or not they were premature and their home address, the right questionnaire for the child at that moment will pop up. The parents can either fill it out online or they can print it and bring it back on their visit. They will not see the summary sheet, but you'll see it on your side to share with them when they come in. That's an, uh, $349.95 a year on top of your pro subscription and again you can see videos of its functionality on the ages and stages website the link that's there for you great we um, want to tell you about some free resources that are available um, to help you as you implement ASQ3 so we have a um, newly designed website it's www.agesandstages.com there's a resource library with lots of um, articles and free downloads in it. We have a whole bunch of success stories on the website and a bunch of parent handouts that you can print and share with your parents. We also have a free newsletter that comes out monthly. Um, as you signed up for this webinar, several you had the option to sign up for the newsletter. Um, and so we will add you to our next release in October. Um, and if you didn't sign up but you're interested now, you can follow that the bit.ly link there to sign up. We also have um, two ways that you can easily calculate, calculate a child's age. We know one of the hardest things about using ASQ3 is just making sure that you're giving each child's parents the right questionnaire. So there's an age calculator on our website that's free. And then we also just created um, an ASQ calculator app that you can use on iOS devices. And both are completely free to use. So the age, there's the age calculator and there's also um, the adjusted scoring calculator. So if a parent skips a question or maybe there's a question that's not culturally appropriate for that family to answer, um, when, you, there's, when you skip an item and you go to score, you need to adjust the score so you're not penalizing the child for not having that question answered about them. And so this, this free calculator on the app and on the website will help you do that adjusted scoring very simply. Um, there's also you know, just instructions in the quick start guide and the user's guide, but the calculators are probably the easiest way to do it. We also um, have a success story from the Young School, which is a Maryland child care program. There are several young schools across um, the metro, Baltimore metro area. The, we interviewed um, Jessica Trail, the director for the King's Contrivance 
location. Um, so this story of how they use ASQ3 um, is on our website, and it's also in a developmental screening toolkit that I'll be telling you about a little later. But this is just another experience with another Maryland child care to hear how they use it. So for all child care programs in Maryland that are ordering, um, choosing ASQ3 as their screener, we're putting together a welcome kit. Um, if you've already placed your order, um, for ASQ3 and received it, these welcome kits will be in our warehouse in about another week, and so we're going to do a big shipment. So if you already ordered it, don't worry, you'll still get your welcome kit. Um, there's a sheet of stickers in there, there's a resource list, and there's a nice 24-page um, developmental screening toolkit, which is on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, it has a bunch of handouts for parents that you can photocopy. It has a case study. It has a sheet with tips from other child care program directors on how to use ASQ3. So we tried to pull as much useful information together as we could to really help programs use ASQ3. So as I said, these will be shipped out. If you've already ordered, they'll go out next week. If you're um, still deciding what you want to order and you choose ASQ3, um, it'll come with your shipment of your tool. And we have a special offer for any programs that place their order with um, Maryland State Department of Ed for ASQ3 by the end of this month. We're sending a free copy of Talk to Me Baby, which is a practical resource on how you can support um, little kids' language development. Um, so if programs have already ordered, we're going to ship everyone's, everyone who has chosen ASQ3 by the end of September is going to receive the free copy of the book. Um, so we're going to ship all of those books in early October. Um, so no worries if you've already if you've already placed your order but didn't know about the special offer that's okay we're still gonna you'll still get a free copy of this book. So now we're gonna take some questions. So if you have any questions about ASQ3 or if you have questions for Dawn about how her program uses ASQ3, please go ahead and submit them now. Um, we did let's see we did have a couple questions that came in that were submitted so I will read read these off. Um, okay. So providers are being told that they need to complete the tool and the parents are not going to be allowed to, act, to opt out of completing it. Um, and that it's a requirement to receive vouchers. You have to participate in the Maryland Excels. Um, so we can't really speak specifically to like the Maryland licensing regulations, but I will say that so if a parent says they don't, so if the parent says they want to opt out and they won't do it, um, the ASQ developers, the tool is developed so the child care teacher can do it as long as the child care teacher spends 15 to 20 hours a week with the child. So just to make sure that the, the teacher knows the child well enough to complete complete the question. Um, so we are going to share some of these more specific questions. We can share them with our contacts at MSDE and we can get back with you with a more um, official answer from the state of Maryland. But I will say that I think in this situation that um, if it is going to be a requirement and the parent won't complete it, the teacher can always complete it. Um, and I think, Dawn, you might have experience from some parents that don't want to complete it. And I don't know if you like, could weigh in a little bit about what you do in those situations. We've actually only had one or two parents since we've been using it, and they didn't refuse to fill it out. Um, they just didn't fill it out, um, which I think refusing to and just not filling it out are different. Um, what we found was that it was often hard for families uh, who have another, who are using another language that is not Spanish, um, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, um, French. Although I believe you have a French. Um, yes, we do. Um, so that's where the letter that the director sends out is really important because uh, you, oftentimes people who their English is not, they're not as proficient as they want to be and they're wonderful at communicating, they can read English much easier than they can speak English. So that's why I think the director's letter is really important. Uh, sometimes it's very hard for them. I know we want to be culturally aware and so I think as the director, make sure you're aware of that. Also. Uh, what happens, though, if a parent doesn't fill it out is that for us, the, um, the conference goes on. The teachers share with them the information from that document the same way they would have shared it prior to that. Um, and we really encourage them to ask questions to get the parents involved in that conversation as well. Um, you know, you just use it, continue to use it as a tool. 
to help parents understand their child more. Great, thank you. Um, and Dawn was mentioning so the different languages that parents may speak. So English and Spanish are the tool, the languages that are included as part of the Maryland, um, the Maryland initiative and the tools that you can choose. We do have a French version that's available. I'm not, I don't think the need for French is that great in Maryland, but we do have a French version that's available for sale. Um, there are also some pilot versions of some other languages. So if you um, need a specific language, you can reach out to us and you might be able to join one of those, one of the pilot sites. Another option that you can, um, you can do is to do it as kind of an interview format. So if there is um, a translator that you work with that speaks Chinese, for example, um, it could be done as an interview format to help the parent fill it out. And that also, if a parent chooses not to fill out the form, you can also uh, use questions to to basically get their their information from them. Like, you know, tell me what you see at home uh, when he is doing such and such. Um, so you can kind of turn it around and sort of, as a teacher, get it filled out in your head from a parent who doesn't, who chooses not to fill it out by making sure that you use those clear, kind, and genuine concerned questions with them, just restating the questions on the form. Um, so I think you can use it. There's a way to sort of integrate the parents back into that process if they choose not to use it. Sometimes if they choose not to use it, it's just, you know, they think it's going to be too time consuming. So again, as the director, when you're sending out that letter, make sure you make it clear that it really isn't that time consuming. Make sure you give them enough time to fill it out. Not enough leeway time to fill it out before your conferences. Great, thank you. Um, we had a question about whether or not providers are required to put results in the new EARS, the Enrollment Reporting Attendance System. Um, that's a question. We'll defer that to the Maryland State Department of Education. Um, we'll share that question with them and um, Share the answer, or they'll get in touch with you. And I think actually the your the specialists at the child care resource and referral, your um, technical and training assistance people should um, be able to help answer those questions too. Um, okay, so we're checking on some other questions that have come in. Okay, um, we've received a notice that um, the regulation for developmental screening says the child must be assessed twice per year, once every six months, and if a parent chooses not to complete the ASQ, the provider must still comply with the regulation of assessing the child. So the teacher yes. should, uh, should go ahead and complete the ASQ on the child. And we, as directors, we just told that was a strong possibility that it was going to become mandatory that you do it twice a year. Um, but I had not heard that it was finally. So thank you for submitting that that yeah. information to one of our listeners. Um, we had got a question during the during the registration process. I think we covered this, but I just want to clarify. The question was, do you have the parents fill out the questionnaire solely, or do the teachers fill it out, or both? So as we as we've said, it's really a program's choice. The tool was developed to have parents complete it. Um, but many centers choose to have their providers and teachers complete it too, so you've got to get a view of a child in both locations. Um, the Young School, which has the case study I mentioned that's on our website, they just have the parents fill it out. So if you want to read about how a center just has parents fill it out, um, you can take a look at that case study and, and see how they do it. So are there any other questions? from our listeners. If you have one, just go ahead and type them in now. And if you have any questions after the webinar, um, please feel free to contact. Um, Kimberly Allen's email address is up on the website. We also, I have the URL to the, a special Maryland landing page that we created on our website that has a whole bunch of information and links. We link to the MSDE um, page about the Maryland Screening Initiative, and which tells you about how you take your training and then fill out your order form. Um, and at this website, you can download sample questionnaires if you're not able to get to your, um, your resource and referral center. Okay, so we thank you for joining us. It was 
really great to have everyone join and hear about ASQ3. And Dawn, we thank you a lot for sharing your experience. Um, oh, I think we just got one more question. <laughs> um, we got a question about the steps of a parent doesn't want their child assessed by themselves or the provider. I think we'll defer that question to MSDE for what to handle if the parent in general doesn't want their child assessed. Um, I think that's probably a, a larger question for the state. And one of the things that we have heard about repeatedly is if we use the language that it's a screening, it's a photograph, it's a snapshot of just how that child is playing and interacting that particular day. So a lot of times our language can help soften the whole feel, which is really the way the questionnaire should be looked at, not as a pass and fail kind of assessment. It's not high stakes. There's no reason for alarm. It's just a snapshot and we're plotting growth and plotting milestones. I think that as a teacher and a director, you also can help parents to understand that we want to create individual plans for children. We want to meet them right where they are and we want to challenge them when, when that's necessary. We want to help strengthen it when that's necessary. Um, and we want to help to help them to feel really confident and safe. So I think it's important that as teachers, we, we make sure that we're consistent in using those kinds of terms, um, as Kimberly said, because we want parents to feel safe enough to know that we've got their child's best interest at heart. Thanks, John. Um, we did get one more question in. This is more of a practical implementation question. Um, do you have to do the screening all in one session, or can you do part of it and then complete it later? Um, that's a good question. You can do part of it and then complete it later. Um, Dawn mentioned that some of her teachers have like a checklist, and as they go about their day, they kind of they note some of the items. Um, you can also tell the parent that you know they can do part of it one night and they can do the other part of it the next night. Um, the only thing you have to be careful of is if you have really little kids, um, the age ranges, so each questionnaire is for a certain age range. So the two month questionnaire is for one month to two month, pretty much one month to three months. So you wouldn't want to give someone the two month questionnaire and give them four months to complete it because then they would be, they would have aged out already. So probably, I'd say within two weeks, if you kind of try, if you give it to the parent, maybe get it back for them in like two, three weeks probably would be good. Um, but and when, but if you're working with the older kids, the age ranges are six month spans. So there's less of a worry about them aging out of the, out of the questionnaire. And that's why it's really important that the teachers become familiar with it, really familiar with it. So if they see something, um, they can sort of mentally make a note and go back and use that in terms of filling it out. So some of them do require that you sit down with the child and do things with them. So you have to plan that into your daily schedule in the classroom as well. Yeah, that's a good point, Dawn. Um, some of the qu questions are, can your child stack three blocks or can your child draw a circle? So the, some of those do take a little more time, so you kind of have to plan for that. Well, that coincides with um, the MSC, if you're accredited, and some of the other things that, you know, they want small groups and uh, small group documentation. So it kind of falls into that as well. Um, so you can sort of make that connection in the classroom and uh, save yourself a little bit of time, um, too. So that's, we learned that's the second go around during the test. Um, so I think, you know, it, there's a really efficient way to do it so that it doesn't require more work. Because uh, I know teachers are worried about that. Thanks, Don. We have another question about um, a parent brochure. Please visit the MSDE website. There are resources on there that have been produced by the State Department to describe, um, to give information and describe developmental screening to parents. So that has been created and um, it is available at the MSDE website. Also, a question came up about privacy issues. Know that if we had any issue with the confidentiality of ASQ online, it wouldn't be used by pediatricians first and foremost. It's completely data secure. It is HIPAA and FERPA compliant, and we don't have um, any, any worry about confidentiality breaches unless you let a parent take over the computer and get into the ASQ online themselves, and then they would see what the data that's in there, and that isn't recommended. You only want the account administrator to be able to have that um, purview. 
right, so thank you all very much for joining us. Um, we really appreciate it. And again, if you have any other questions, um, please feel free to reach out to us. And we're recording this, so you'll receive a link that you can um, share with other people in your centers or people at other centers if you'd like. So thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, Dawn. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.